We're continuing our look at contingency theories of leadership. So we're recognizing that different situations require different styles of leadership. In our previous video, we looked at situational leadership, which says different leadership styles are necessary depending on the employee's ability and motivation. Recalling back to our definition that performance is ability times motivation. What we're going to look at now is the house path goal theory. The house path goal theory says the leader's job is to assist the follower in, attain, in attaining their goals and providing the necessary direction and support to ensure the goals are compatible with the overall objectives of the organization. So here we are focusing on the goals of the individual and alignment with the goals of the institution, whereas the situational uh, leadership theory looked at the individual's ability and motivation. So the house path goal theory assumes that the same leader can display different leadership styles depending on the situation. And this theory comes from Robert House, who's the founder of Global Leadership and Organizational Behavior Effectiveness Research Program, GLOBE. And we're actually going to come back to work from GLOBE uh, in some later videos. But what he did is he looked at uh, 40 different countries, uh, leadership in 62 uh, different societies, looking at how do we lead uh, and different cultures, different organizations around the world. So as we get uh, to this cross-cultural leadership, how do we lead in a diverse workforce? Uh, we'll see more of Robert House. So here his path goal theory expands on Vroom's expectancy theory. So recall that Vroom's expectancy theory says that we need as management or as leadership to tie workers' effort to their individual performance. So they, they put in a lot of effort, they should get a high performance. That is that expectancy aspect. And then we need the performance, the high performance to tie to reward. So you perform well, you get rewarded. That's the instrumentality. And then we need those rewards to match what the individual wants in terms of rewards. So they should align with their individual goals. And that's the valence aspect that we looked at. We looked at Vroom's expectancy theory. So House's work ties to this expectancy model. There should be alignment between you work hard, that then you get high performance, that's tied to rewards, and the rewards are attached to what people want. So the idea here is that different leader behavior, different types of leadership, go with certain situations based on the outcomes that we're trying to achieve, based on the goals that the uh, the, the employee, the follower has. So we'll come back to the slide in a moment, but let's start here in terms of the four types of leadership. So we have directive leadership. We know we let the subordinate know what's expected of them. We schedule the work to be done. We give guidelines in terms of how to accomplish this task. So really this is kind of similar to that telling or directive that we saw in the situational leadership. Then we have supportive, showing concern for the needs of followers. Participatory, consulting with group members, using their suggestions, so engaging uh, subordinates and members in decision making. And then we have an achievement-oriented leadership style, which sets challenging goals and expects the followers to rise to the occasion and perform at their highest level. So what type of leadership uh, are you depends on the situation. So if your follower lacks self-confidence, okay, then we need more of that supportive leadership. So we need more of that relationship building between the leader and the employee to help build that self-confidence. So we're trying to increase confidence to help them achieve their work outcome. We want improved satisfaction and increased performance. If it's an ambiguous job, so it's unclear in terms of what the steps are to take, there's not a lot of structure or formalization, then we need a leader that's more directive. So we need them to tell what's expected of people. When does it need to be done? What are the guidelines? So starting to set some of those uh, clear expectations. This then helps in terms of that path between effort tied to performance, tied to reward. If the job isn't challenging, 
then we need a leadership that is achievement oriented. So setting challenging goals to, to allow our employees to rise to the occasion and let them it, increase their performance and their job satisfaction uh, by trying to meet those, those goals. If we have a situation where we have an incorrect reward, so it's not appropriately rewarding the performance that we want, then we're going to need more of a participatory leadership style. So we need to consult with the employees and engage them, uh, have them make suggestions and uh, help them be, have them be part of the decision-making process, clarifying the followers' needs, changing the rewards, and coming back to this idea of fixing the alignment in terms of effort. Good effort, high effort leads to higher performance, higher performance leads to rewards, and the rewards are matching the individual goals. So if that is not aligned, then you need a more participatory leadership style to help improve that and create that alignment in terms of increasing satisfaction and also getting employees to put in the effort in order to obtain those rewards. So the leadership style depends on uh, the, the goals, the needs of the followers. Is it that they need clarity in terms of the job, so more directive leadership? Is it that uh, they're just not confident, in which case then we need more of that social aspect, that relationship building, supportive leadership? Is it that we're not challenging them, they've gotten bored, uh, and so we need to be more achievement oriented? Or is there an issue with the alignment in terms of effort, performance, and reward, in which case we engage them in terms of how uh, we make decisions for the organization? What you see in House's path goal theory is that there are things that change the leadership style. And it comes about down to subordinate personality and characteristics of the environment. So these can change which leadership uh, style that you need. So suppose that you have a participatory leader. So this is one who consults with the group, uses their suggestions to make decisions. A participatory leader works well when you have subordinates with internal locuses of control, right? So they determine their own fate, then they want to be involved in decisions that evaluate their performance. If you have subordinates who have an external locus of control, they feel like other people determine their fate, they don't control it themselves, then they want someone who will determine their own fate. They want a directive leader who will tell them exactly what to do and what's expected of them. So the internal locus versus external locus of control can determine what type of leadership you have. If you have subordinates who feel they have high ability so they are ones that are highly educated, they are experts, very skilled uh, workers, then because they believe they have high ability, they will not take well to directive leadership. Remember directive leadership being someone telling them exactly what to do and how to do it. When you have workers who feel like they are content experts, they have the technical skills, they're going to want more autonomy in the decision-making process. And so that directive dictatorial leadership does not go over well. The characteristics of the environment will also determine the leadership type. So if you have a task that is highly structured, so it's very much process oriented, the steps are very clear, then having a directive leadership is a bit redundant. You don't need a manager, a leader, who's telling them do step one, step two, step three, because the task itself can only be done a certain way. So directed leadership is going to be redundant and less effective. What you'll need is more supportive leadership to have greater follower satisfaction. Because if the steps are quite clear, there's only one way to go, then that supportive one is more in terms of engaging employees, having that relationship so they feel more motivated, more supportive. And remember that supportive one comes from lack of self-confidence. So there are the clear steps to follow. We just need to make them feel confident to follow those steps. So if you have a high structure, 
then a more supportive leadership works. If you have high formalization, so the organization itself is highly formalized in terms of lots of roles and procedures. So not just a single task being highly structured, but the whole organization having lots of process, uh, lots of procedures and rules. Then what you're going to find is that directive leadership is really going to reduce worker satisfaction because it's going to be even more constraining. So a highly formalized, here's what you can do, here's what you don't do. If you're doing this, there's exactly how to do it. That's you know very limiting for, for an employee. If on top of that you have a, a leader who's also telling you what to do, um, then that is going to decrease worker satisfaction, right? They're going to get really annoyed uh, at constantly being treated like a machine, right? In a team environment where you have lots of social supports, so where it is going to be a very collaborative work environment to start with, then the supportive leadership style is less necessary. So if you already have team-based work and then you have a leader comes in who's very supportive, it doesn't really add a whole lot of value because you already have the social supports uh, present for the job. So there are things related to the personality of the employee and to the work environment itself that will also impact the appropriate type of leadership in addition to what house looked at which is situations where your workers have less confidence where the job is more ambiguous where there's a lot lack of challenge to your workers your workers get bored uh, or where there's not correct alignment in terms of the expectancy theory